lows, highs and lows. It's all the same. Highs and lows, highs and lows. Keep all your games. Highs and lows, highs and lows. It's all the same. Highs and lows, highs and lows. All right, thanks. We have a great show lined up today. UT Teller offers many hands-on classes to prepare our students for the real world. I have to ask, why did you decide to join the mass communication program? Hey guys. Hi. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not drunk or anything, guys. I promise. This is this is this is normal. I'm not. No, are you? There's something you're not telling me. And for me, it started whenever I was a kid in middle school. You know, I wasn't really like a lot of the other boys. I wasn't into a lot of the things they were into with, you know, play fighting, wrestling, sports. Um, it's amazing how even whenever they're seven or eight years old, they'll still attack you for being just a little bit different. And it, it got to me. You know, I've always been a very empathetic person. I still get emotions like that. And there are times where that's great and times where I absolutely hate it, you know? But it got to me as a kid. It, it caused me to start. Just go with it, come what may, whatever like mob of hate trolls comes my way, I can handle it because I'm better than them. Bourgeoisie, the capitalist class that owns the majority of society's wealth and controls the means of production. You cannot give up hope. Whatever tools you have at your disposal, use them. Work diligently and stay out of the sight of the OMP's all-seeing eye. It's wild to think I'm living in a world right now where federal agents are roaming the streets of my city like a modern Gestapo and snatching people left and right without saying a word about where they're being taken or even why they're being taken. It's the heteropatriarchal power dynamic that's baked into American society. And yes, I know some people watching probably just started screaming, Wow! Me too! Feminists always ruin everything! Dumb SJW! Or whatever it is that they spam people's comment sections with.
You know, it's remarkable to me looking back at my journey as a whole and actually seeing with my own eyes how far I've come because I think as trans people, we sometimes get caught in the cycle of being unable to see the person that everyone around us sees and feeling like we aren't making progress or don't pass or struggle to find the confidence in ourselves that we so desperately want. Because many of us, though not all, strive to reach a point where we're either cis passing or at least not as hounded by the demons of dysphoria as we used to be. We can unintentionally trap ourselves in these self destructive thought patterns that prevent us from just being able to see and accept who it is we are and who it is that we're becoming. Transitioning is a lifelong journey with no real end point since some choose to have surgeries and begin hormone therapy and others don't and it all comes down to whatever makes you feel happiest and the most comfortable in your own skin. Transness is not and should not be dictated by certain ideals that some in the community simply aren't interested in. Gatekeeping only serves to isolate and alienate those most in need of community and support, and it only seems right to extend the same love and acceptance to others that we need in order to develop a healthier relationship with ourselves and find the confidence we need to fully embrace the self that's been there all along. And I can confidently say that if it weren't for this community and every single soul who's shown me kindness, wisdom, love, and given me the tools to become who I am today, I would likely no longer be around. The depression and hatred over my body and life pre-transition was intense to the point that I disconnected from life altogether and existed in a haze with no desire to pull myself out of that state because I'd essentially given up on myself. This video was shot the day I finally accepted my transness and even though I had no idea at the time what it meant for me and my life, it felt like I'd at last come upon the turning point that would save my life and give it meaning. And allow me to shatter this illusory, meaningless reality I constructed that was little by little killing me. Freedom was something that my soul cried out for every single day, and the day that I started HRT was the day I knew that freedom was just within reach. It was terrifying, exhilarating, and wholly new to me, and over the course of days, not weeks, days. The fog that I've been trapped in for years finally lifted and I was suddenly connected to my body, myself, and those around me. And it's like a switch was flipped that turned me into a normal functioning human being. It felt easier to be around friends and family. I was no longer afraid to express myself freely. My desire to pursue creative hobbies or other things became incredibly intense. And it's like I finally found a hunger for life. The thought of going any longer without meaningful relationships and pursuits or less Letting myself just decay rather than diving into myself in order to cultivate a presentation and sense of self that felt genuine to who I knew myself to be, rather than a face constructed to please society and those around me that was ultimately just a front, terrified me. And the only direction left to go was forward into a life that for the first time I was genuinely excited to live. Transitioning for me wasn't just a way to finally feel at home in my own body, but the key to helping me at last understand who I was, what my sexuality and identity were, what I wanted out of life, what my interests were, how I wanted to present, how I loved, who I wanted to be loved by, and how I wanted to be loved, what I wanted my relationships to look like, the impact that I wanted to have on my friends and my community, and so, so much more. Transitioning taught me how to live and be, and it is the most important decision I have ever made. As of the recording of this video, my three-year HRT anniversary is still two months away. I have yet to undergo FFS and GRS procedures, even though I do want both. And in the grand scheme of things, I'm still a baby tran, despite being 30 years old. That's a fascinating little dichotomy that would take another video to properly break down. Comment below if that's something you'd be interested in seeing.
But there are milestones I still have yet to reach. But it doesn't make the experiences I've had thus far any less significant. I'm the happiest I've ever been, and more and more consistently feeling alright about myself, and more and more opening up to others and gaining a strong understanding of myself, my trauma, my mental health, my identity, all of it. It feels like I finally know in a very profound and intimate way who Alice is, and have I found a kind of love for myself that I didn't think I'd ever experience. My partner has also been an absolute blessing in my life in the ways that they've helped me find happiness and comfort in the parts of myself that I was ashamed of or scared to reveal to others. So credit where credit's due. Love you! <laughs> but yeah, I have no idea where 2021 or the following years will take me, but it seems like things are on the up and up. So I couldn't be more excited to just lean into the journey and embrace wherever it is that it takes me. And don't ever forget, everything I've just described can absolutely happen for you too. Everyone's transition looks different, and there's really no one way to be trans, but it is the most amazing part of being a community that continually inspires, energizes, and loves me me day in and day out. This community is here for you just like it's been there for me. And don't ever forget, you can lean on us when you need it. I've started to see myself as sort of a trans elder and role model for younger people in my community. And if you're one of those people watching this video right now, First off, you're an amazing human being who deserves nothing but all the love in the world. And no matter what, you will never be alone. Ever. I'm talking to you through a screen, but we're both a part of this family, and you are a vital part of it. I know what it's like to be rejected by family members for your identity. I know what it's like to be attacked and harassed by others for the crime of being yourself. I know what it's like to feel othered, left behind, disrespected, ignored, and lost. Coming to terms with who you are in an unwelcome environment is a hellish experience that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. But there will never be a point at which you are out of reach of this community. No matter what, there are people more than happy to encourage you, give you guidance or love when you're needing it, and help you find acceptance for yourself even if those close to you refuse to see you for who you are. Remember, your happiness is the most important thing above all else. If those around you refuse to be happy for you or support you in your journey, that's their cross to bear and not yours. I say this all the time, but we really are all in this together. Maybe I should put it on a shirt and sell it. <laughs> Look at me talking about merch in an inspirational video. God, I am just shameless. This community is family, and family means nobody gets left behind or forgotten. I love that movie so much. <laughs> I love y'all. You inspire me every single day. Don't let the world pressure you into being someone you're not. Embrace the you that only you can be. Because the light you possess is beautiful and unique to you. And there are others who will be healed and guided by that light. Here's to whatever the hell is next. Y'all ready? <laughs>